I wrote a book in a month. Sort of. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda. You're watching Swallow Entertainment. And today we're talking about how I completed, I won, NaNoWriMo. What is NaNoWriMo, you may be asking? Well, NaNoWriMo stands for National Novel Writing Month. There's about two a year. I believe there's one in April and then November, which is the one that I just did. Um, if you've been following me on my other social media platforms or even in some of the other videos that I've put out in the last couple of weeks, you may have heard me mentioning that I uh, did NaNoWriMo or that I was doing it or whatever. And NaNoWriMo basically is that you're committing to writing 50,000 words in a month. I have told myself since I was probably in seventh grade that writing was something that I really wanted to do with my life. Actually, it was more like before seventh grade because fourth grade Amanda was very set in her idea of writing a book about literally the, the only premise that I had, fourth grade Amanda, was that there was a witch, she had a cat, and she lived in a little shack. That was the only premise I had for this book that I was going to write. I think her name was Miranda because for the longest time I wanted my name to be Miranda. I didn't like Amanda and I was like, Miranda's a better name. It sounds witchy, it sounds fun. And so fourth grade Amanda was very set on that. And then I think my parent was like, okay, but if you're gonna do this, I'm gonna make you stick to it. And it sounded like homework and I was not about to do that over my summer break. But first, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes to help in inspire you. You can explore new and existing interests of yours and develop them more and just all around get yourself more inspired. It's curated with the goal in mind of learning so there are no ads on any of the courses and they're constantly coming out with new ones. They have classes for every skill level so regardless of where you are at in your creative journey, Skillshare has classes that'll fit you. For NaNoWriMo, I started doing their creative writing boot camp and I really like the exercises for finding new inspiration for your new story. My content doesn't really have a set vibe. I tried out their finder style class which helps you kind of figure out what gets you inspired and what really makes up your creativity. Skillshare is doing an offer so that the first thousand of you that click the link in my description box will get one month free of Skillshare to help explore your creativity and develop new passion. Again, that's for the first thousand people who click the link down below, you get one month free of Skillshare. And thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I have started and not finished several books throughout my life. Um, quite frankly, some of the stuff, I've gone back through what I wrote when I was in middle school alone. And there were times where middle school Amanda, who was deeply unhappy and the only source of serotonin she could find was writing paranormal books. <laughs> <laughs> like some of the chapters that I cranked out in the span of like two weeks is actually insane. Um, probably could have done NaNoWriMo in the blink of an eye back then. But NaNoWriMo is committing to writing 50,000 words. You don't have to finish a project in that time. And obviously a lot of books these days are longer than 50,000 words, but they use 50,000 words because 50,000 words is the length of The Great Gatsby. Something that's a challenge, but still doable in 30 days of November. So even though I've never actually finished anything, I've kind of been having this like belief that I'm going to work more on finishing my projects and getting things done. And I knew I was like, you know what? I will feel accomplished if I do NaNoWriMo. I've wanted to do it for years, so I'm gonna do it this year. And I was like, if I can turn it into a video, all the better. I put on hold a different draft that I was writing, a work in progress I was doing, one that I started, God, back in March. And I think I was like 15 or 16 chapters in. And the thing about NaNo is that uh, though that one wasn't done, you have to start a new project. You can have plenty of outlining done and I'll include some of the uh, vlog footage that I did while I was outlining in October for Preptober. So this is my, um, idea book, sort of. I have a lot of ones that are like women loving women. A lot of those story arcs, like that's like just the main, like here's this very basic plot, but there's lesbians. <laughs> I thought about it and I was like, you know, I have a variety of ideas for like smut books um, because of course I do. And I thought that that would be a good idea for NaNoWriMo to do one of those ideas because then if I ever get stuck, I can just have someone whip out a penis. And I think that that, would like, you know, prevent me from getting stuck and help me get to word counts and all of that. However, none of my ideas for those books are like really like, I'm like, okay, this will power me through for a whole month. I have a variety of like takes on Romeo and Juliet because I get bored and that's always like fun. Reincarnated lovers, enemies to lovers. Yeah, Romeo and Juliet first right here. Lots of not Regency era, but like 
fantasy, regal stories. Some of my ideas are not dumb. I'm just like, God, when did I come up with this? Like I forgot. I went through a lot of my old ideas and there was this one idea that I had had for a little while that was kind of sticking with me. And that was uh, this idea of this young woman, 1920, whose uh, mother was killed when she was little and they never found who it was. And then every year she's stuck in the small town and every year these guys come by and she befriends these three travelers that come through every year for their fall festival, okay? She also has the awareness of a sandal though because she doesn't like correlate that like, huh, while these guys are in town, people die during the fall festival. From that, that kind of spread. This thing, this is my first draft of my untitled book. There's no title on NaNoWriMo website if you find me on there. I'm just under Amanda Gold. It's not hard to find me on NaNo. I titled it Slasher Untitled or Untitled Slasher because it's basically spawned from my love of slasher movies. And so uh, basically there are three killers, the three guys, the three killers, and then there's more. Basically the philosophy of this book is that sometimes men written by women, aka me, are worse. <laughs> And that's where I really want to do with this. So uh, the book was chaotic as hell and very fun to write. And it was actually much easier for me to write. And I found that when I was doing the outline and starting to actually write it once November started and all of that, I, a lot of it flowed really quickly. I finished my outline for the slasher novel. Rough outline, it's super rough. I'm gonna rewrite it, I've decided. because I think that's the best way for me to do it, but I'm doing my character uh, analysis first because I work best that way when I have like full character workups done already. Then they kind of write themselves. They tell me how the story is going. And also um, they'll tell me what they will and won't do. For those of you who don't know, November is my birthday month. My birthday is November 7th. And so I had planned to write at least 2000 words for the first six days so that for November 7th, if I didn't get the chance to write, I wouldn't write. I didn't feel like I was behind or I didn't fall behind. Um, ended up not being a problem, frankly. Um, I wrote a lot. <laughs> Treating myself for one day of writing done. And frankly, I crushed this bitch. Let me show you guys what I'm at. See that? All for November 1st. Hell yeah. This is the writing track. So the words needed today was 1667. Obviously that was higher for me because I'm taking my birthday off. So I needed about 2020 words total, but I ended up doing 3,581. Technically I have two chapters done, but I already know like based on what I'm doing. One, I left out a whole section. <laughs> Ugh, I feel like that's gonna bite me in the ass, but I make an, I made a note of it. I know to add it later. I'm just gonna keep on trucking. I'm not gonna try and be like, oh, where can I move it? Nope, just gonna keep on trucking. I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna stop for today. In total, during the month of November, I actually ended up writing 56,000 words. And throughout while I was tagging everything, some days I wrote very little, um, some days I wrote a lot. In the first couple of days, let's see, first day I wrote 3,500 words, second day I wrote almost 4,500, 3,000 words, 3,000 words. The seventh I did end up writing because I wanted to keep my streak going because it tracks how many days in a row you log your writing. And I wrote 162 words that day. So for the most part, I think that what helped me here was starting out really strong, just kind of carving out time. I am the type of person that writing sprints I have found actually work really well for me. So what I do is I take my little time timer, it's literally called that. I set 15, 20, 30 minutes and I don't do anything else, I just write. I stop and sometimes if I'm still in the mood to write and I'm still like going for it, I just keep writing. Other times I just stop there, log, maybe get some water, go for a little walk, play with Hermes. Cause usually 15 minutes is really all I get before Hermes is like, pay attention to me. I meant to record this last night, but I forgot. Hi, so it's the end of week one and one day into NaNoWriMo. And my current word count at the time of writing this, or filming this, I guess you could say, yesterday was my birthday. So I only wrote, I think a total of a hundred words. As of yesterday, I was at uh, 20,226 words. I was supposed to be at, let's see, 11,000, and 669 words. I got to 50 on the 27th and I actually uh, just blew kind, of, blew kind of past that. And at the end of it all, my first draft, and again, this is the shit draft. And I think that's the thing that has always tripped me up because I have this way of dealing with my writer's block in the past. I think every every the way that every writer deals with writer's block is very specific to them. It's a very personal thing, writing at the end of the day. And what works for me may not work for you. But I do think that finding ways to deal with writer's block is very integral into being, I don't wanna use the word successful writer, but just having peace in writing. <laughs> Let's go with that. Um, the way I used to deal with my writer's block though is insane. I usually didn't have outlines. I've learned from this experience especially that I am definitely a 
plantster. I'm not necessarily a pantser. A pantser is like you just write by the seat of your pants. You don't have an outline. You're basically going on vibes and vibes alone. And then a planter slash a planner. Or no, is it just planner? It might just be planner or planter, whatever. Basically you have an outline and I have found that I work really well. I'm kind of a plantster, so I'm both in that I have an outline that's kind of like basically a, a suggestion, a roadmap. I'm working on this scene and I know eventually I'm gonna have Jasper tell Grace about it the first time he killed someone. It's a whole thing, it's, it's, it's important to his character, but I don't know if it's happening now. Cause what's happening now is they're in the car and Grace just realized that he has a different car every year she sees him. And she was like basically being like, okay, what's the deal? And uh, he was like, well, I switch cars every couple of weeks. I got, I got this one right before I came to Harbor. And she's like, and is it yours? Because she knows it's not, but she just wants him saying, he's like, no, I stole it. And she's like, okay, that's all I wanted to hear. Gets in the car. And he realizes, or he has the realization, it's like, wait, so if I just tell you the truth, you're not going to be upset with me? She's like, well, I just think I owe the truth. Not going to say I'm not going to be upset with you, but like, I think at the very least with everything, you should tell me the truth. And then he's like, okay, well, you're in danger. I need you to trust me. So what do you want to know? You know, what? like, I want you to know that I'm not going to hurt you. So she's asking him questions and he's answering all these questions. See, I feel like this is going to be the ending point. Because right now what's happening is she just realized that the necklace that he gave her a year ago came from a dead woman. So um, I think that needs to be where this chapter and scene ends. And then I think they're just gonna get back on the road and she's just gonna be like, you know what, let's just go. Let's just go, this conversation is over. So I think he's gonna tell her later. Thanks for letting me talk this through with you. There are plenty of things that were in my outline that I had written out um, in my outline. Let's see, where does it start? Rough outline, let's see, page, 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 page. <laughs> The end. And the ending that I originally wrote has nothing to do with the ending that I ended up going with in this um, because I was also very open about the ending. I don't even know if I'm gonna keep the ending that I have currently. The reason I consider myself a planster is that um, at a certain point, I'm very character focused in what I like to write and especially in my planning process. I like knowing everything about my characters as much as I can. And the thing about that is that at a certain point, my characters hold a knife to my throat and tell me that it doesn't matter what I want them to do, they're gonna do what they wanna do and I'm just gonna write it down. So uh, that happened quite frequently. Hello, I have yet to write today, but I'm going to be writing today. It is currently 11.32 today. I'm not stuck. I just, I'm at the point in my outline where I knew, like I knew I needed something else. And so I'm just kind of scrounging. Cause like, I kind of know how I want to set up the end because I, I think if anything for this book, I'm not sure if I want it to be a standalone or a duology. It really depends on which of the endings that I have planned. Cause I've, Okay, the same event happens at the ending, but it can go one of two ways. And I really don't know how it's gonna play out yet until I get closer to that point. Cause I think one sets up a great ending. And then the other one I think could be a great kickoff to a sequel potentially for a duology specifically. I don't know yet though. But I mean, I'm just at this point where it's like, okay, there's another person dead. They found the body. Okay, that's happened. And then now it's like kind of like they spotted one of the other killers that's in town. They still haven't spotted the the person that uh, attacked Grace. I don't know. I feel like I need something here. I'm on Martin's point of view right now because I just think that, that that it works better. Oh, should I have him kill someone? He needs to kill someone in this. That's like the whole point. He has to kill someone. Okay, I figured it out. He's gonna kill someone. That's what I need to do. And then that's gonna, cause the festival's starting at this point. So he's gonna kill someone. Is it his point of view? What I've kind of been doing and I didn't realize I was doing this at first is all of the murders, like all the killing actually has happened from someone else's point of view than the person doing the killing. So we actually haven't seen the perspective of the killers yet. And I kind of like that, frankly. The reader has to kind of figure out how they're feeling in the moment and then they can break it through later. Do I want someone else's POV? Has Grace seen them kill anyone yet? No. She just knows that they did. She knows that Jasper has killed someone, but she hasn't. Ooh, 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 okay. Okay, okay, I'm hanging up on you, goodbye. How I used to deal with writer's block is when I would get stuck and I wouldn't know where I was going in a story or a chapter or whatever, I would either reread the chapter I was working on or 
In certain cases, if that didn't work, I would just go back to the start of whatever I was writing, as in page one, and just reread the whole thing. Now, obviously in doing that, you open yourself up to critiques of the writing you've already completed. And so you just kind of start editing, especially when you're like me and you work on a computer, you just edit as you're going. And so then I would never actually either get back to the point where I was stuck or I would get to the point I was stuck and I still wouldn't know what to do because I didn't address the problem of what was missing. And I just went back and redid everything. It wasn't until, the, and when I tell you this piece of advice, you're gonna be like, yeah, that sounds obvious. It was not to me. Being on TikTok, um, I have discovered Victoria Aveyard, who is the author of the Red Queen series and then now Realm Breaker. But there was a TikTok that popped up on my For You page from her. And someone was like, what's the best piece of writing advice you could give or something like that. And she said the most, to me, groundbreaking advice, and I don't know why this never occurred to me. She said, give yourself permission to write that imperfect first draft. Give yourself permission to write the bad first draft because you'd rather have a finished draft than a perfect chapter one. I know that sounds obvious, like just power through. Don't go back, do not edit. Whatever you wrote the day before, that is dead to you, keep going. I don't know why that never occurred to me, but it didn't. And honestly, having that guide, even for the work in progress that I was working on prior to starting this project, like, I it really did kind of make me force myself to push forward because then if I got stuck, I would have to do what I do now when I get stuck, where either I know what I'm doing next, and so I write the elephant rule where you just kind of put elephant and this only works if there's no elephants in your story, but whatever, you just pick a word that's kind of like your continuous word so that when you are editing, you can just search elephant or pineapple or aardvark or artichoke, whatever the fuck you wanna use, and you can search throughout your draft and go back in and fix things. And I did that for a lot of people's last names when I didn't have ideas for last names. The name of this town, I I think I called the town Harbor Freight. <laughs> this random town in Oregon, because I didn't want to use a real town in Oregon, so I called it Harbor Freight. And then I just kind of kept started calling it Harbor. And I decided I'm not going to keep that because they're not near a harbor. <laughs> Martin has spotted his victim. And then as I was writing it, okay, now I'm in Grace's point of view. She's kind of freaking out, even though she's literally done worse at this point. And I decided a, a thing I can't tell you because it's another twist, but I, I realized something as I was writing this. So fuck yeah, okay, writing that down as well. <laughs> oh, also I decided that the ending, originally I was gonna have it be the ending, there's a thing that happens and then it takes place in the woods. I don't want that. I, I think I need, there's a maze now. I decided there's a hay bale maze um, at this uh, fair, because it's a fall festival. So obviously there's fall shit, um, including hay for some reason. There's gonna be a hay maze and the, one of the big things is gonna happen in there because I think it would be fun. Do I want fire? I don't know, I've always wanted to set a hay maze on fire. I just kind of want to see what that would look like. Like a corn maze is one thing, but I don't think that that burns in the way that you think that burns. I think hay would just like, pfft, like go and, you know? I kind of want a maze, corn, uh, hay maze on fire. This is a hard copy because I'm, this is, it's like, Double spaced. I used Scrivener. It started doing something dumb at a certain point. Started revising. This is my first page. I'm pushing it way back here so you can't read anything. But yeah, it's all marked up. It's not done. The reason I'm doing hard copy um, is because it kind of forces me to not like take my time more versus like typing and fixing as I'm going editing wise. So I'm trying that for my second draft. No one's ever gonna see this first draft. None of you will ever see this draft. No one's gonna see it. My father's not gonna see it. My friends are not gonna see it. Hermes is arguably not going to see it, but it's done. And it, I, I will admit, I expected that after I typed the last word and I knew I was done, and I was like, okay, this draft is done. This is done. I was expecting a feeling of accomplishment. I was expecting a feeling of like, good for me. Cause as I was getting to that point, that's what I was feeling. I was like, holy shit, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna finish this. I'm gonna finish the first non-homework, non-school assignment piece of writing that's not a blog post or an article on Medium. That's not a, mo a video script. Like I'm gonna do it. It's not a piece of fan fiction like I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm doing it. And I got to the last word and I like, I, I hit save one last time on Scrivener just so it was done. And I didn't feel that. <laughs> I felt a lot of anxiety. I felt a lot of, holy shit, this is bad. No one can ever read this. And I knew that no one's ever gonna read this. That's fine. I'm gonna make it better. I made it exist. 
and now I get to make it better. And th that that part's exciting to me. I'm really excited to go back in and read things because I'm sure there's things that I wrote that I forgot about. You know, like there was a lot of things and I have plenty of notes that I wrote as I was writing, like as I was going through and I was like, oh shit, I needed to bring up this part about her dad or I needed to bring up this thing or one of them needs to ask this or one of them needs to go and do this. Or I had a lot of fun kind of like figuring out the different motivations for uh, the various killers uh, characters in this. And I have this idea of going back and at least for the prologue, I already have a note for a prologue potentially about um, one of the other killers that's gonna end up coming to Harbor and all this other things. I, I need to change Harbor. I can't keep calling it Harbor. I already know I'm gonna change one of the characters names because I named one of the guys Jasper because originally his name was gonna be Patrick. And then I realized that people were gonna call him Patrick Bateman and I didn't want to do that. So uh, there is a Sheriff Patrick now. Also Jasper is the name of my friend's dog who passed away. So she's like, you can't call him Jasper. I need something. She started naming off dictators. Like I should name him a dictator. He's a serial killer. So, you know, I hit 50,000 words. It's not done yet. I am now at 53,104 words. Um, I'm just gonna keep writing. My goal is to finish tomorrow. I don't know if I will. I'm at a pretty pivotable point. Like the shit is hitting the fan. You know, the thing is happening. The, well, not the thing yet. The catalyst to the thing is happening. And so, I mean, I would like to think that I'm gonna finish tomorrow, but I also don't think I'm gonna finish tomorrow. But you know, I did what I technically was supposed to do. You know, I did NaNoWriMo, 50,000 words in a month. I did it, did it early. Yay, I would like to have had a more finished thing. But you know, there's so much done. <laughs> this is the most finished thing I've ever really done. So I feel really accomplished, even though it's not done yet. And I'm trying not to lean into that because I don't want myself to get complacent and not finish it and then like get to January and have the first draft still not be done. You know, I so I, I really want, if I am gonna go into December, that I want it done within the first week. You know, like I, I just need to get this shit draft done, make everything happen, happen. I'm on track, but I just, I'm not on track to finish in November. And I think that's okay. Cause I mean, I did my 50,000. So I think this is good, you know, like things are happening, you know, like Simon's off somewhere else, Martin's somewhere else. He literally cannot be of any help. And then, you know, it's just him and Grace and then him and Grace get separated and chaos is forming. And so I, I think I can power through a little bit more. I can at least end this out, you know? So like the, the catalyst event is completed for the most part before we get into like the climactic moment. I'm butchering my terminology for the story structure, but yeah, I'm gonna drink some hot chocolate and write a little bit more. I would like this book to be something someday, whether that involves traditional publishing or me self-publishing. I would very much like to do it. I am proud of what I've written, even if I have a lot of anxiety about it. If that's we, I know I'm proud I finished it. I'm very proud of myself for finishing it. And I'm gonna get weird if I start talking more about that. I like this. I like Grace's journey that I kind of forced her to go through throughout this, even though it was chaotic as shit. And honestly, I really liked blogging the, vlogging the experience while I was doing it. I found that it's kind of like, I don't know if you guys know the rubber duck, the rubber duck theory, where it's like coders use rubber ducks to talk to like through their code with or something. And it's like kind of a way to get through questions in your code and figure out any issues. I kind of did that with the vlog where I, as I was talking, I kind of figured out like, oh, I'm missing this thing or I should do this. And it kind of worked as like a way to talk through certain plot gaps that I had. Like there were things that I had in my outline that it was like, okay, literally wrote elephant at one point in my my outline because I was like, okay, this happens. And then the this ending event happens. And even though I changed how the ending event played out, I didn't know how to get to that middle spot, you know, cause like you kind of, you gotta kind of have, when you start with a murder, <laughs> when you start pretty early on with a murder, you gotta kind of play around a bit more. You gotta do some things to level up. And so um, I wasn't entirely sure at certain points how to do that. Um, I thank you to Jordan and my dad. My dad is also a writer. He wrote a movie, Scenes of the Crime, years ago, came out when I was, I think, three. Don't worry, it does not give me anything nepotism-wise. <laughs> like, my dad's always been very encouraging of my writing and of my entertainment interests and things like that. And so um, he was very open to me calling him up and being like, okay, let me tell you about this thing and I need to figure this out. And what happened more often is he would throw out ideas and I would be like, no, she wouldn't do that. Like there was this one point where I was trying to get from, there's a point where Grace is attacked. See, this is the problem with me one day if I ever do have kids. All the girl names and all the guy names that I like, I just stick on characters and then I'm never gonna be able to name my kid. <laughs> 
if I ever have kids. But yeah, I always like the name Grace. So Grace is the main character um, or one of them. And uh, there's one point where she was attacked and I was like, okay, but I'm trying to figure out how she gets attacked and then how the guys stumble upon her. Like I need to figure out that. And she was like, okay, he, she's jogging. And I'm like, no, she wouldn't do that because Grace's whole thing is that all she's done up until this point in her life is that she has tried to not end up the way that her mother was and not end up murdered the way that her mother was in her own home. And so she wouldn't go out jogging in the main road in this town because she just wouldn't do that. That's not something that she would do because it's a safety thing. She would not put herself in that position. Not that anyone jogging who gets attacked is, in, is gonna get attacked and that, that they, they deserve it. I'm just saying like for herself, okay. She would not do that. And so what I, what would happen a lot is that my dad would throw things out and I'd be like, no, she wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do that, X, Y, and Z. And then in doing that, I would be like, oh, but she would do this, you know, like, and then that would fill in the gap. So I thank my father, I thank Jordan, I thank Hermes for looking at me like I was crazy every time I was like, okay, but like, what about this? <laughs> But yeah, as far as motivation for getting yourself through uh, NaNoWriMo, because, you know, sometimes just hitting word counts, you have to average about 1,667 words a day in order to get 50,000 words in 30 days. Like I said, I did a lot more than that, but there are also days that I didn't do that. There were days that I think starting out as strong as I did, that did good and bad for me because there were days where I was like, it's fine, I can only write 200 words or I didn't prioritize uh, writing and so I would barely write by midnight and then that was it. I did manage to write every single day, but you know, I definitely could have prioritized my writing better. There were times where it would tell me like, at this rate, you'll finish November 15th, or at this rate, you'll finish November 20th. And so because I had gotten such a large start, it did allow me to have that more leeway moving through. I would have liked to have kind of cranked it out a little more here and there, but you know, life gets in the way. But the way that I was able to kind of give myself little benchmarks was that other than just having a hopefully workable draft by the end of this, I gave myself little things that I wanted for different milestones. Jay is like my sweater. <laughs> this is the uh, black sheep sweater uh, that uh, from Warm and Wonderful that Princess Diana popularized. <laughs> I've wanted this sweater for months. <laughs> I told myself I could get one if I hit the 50,000 word mark. And so this is one of my suggestions for basically hitting your word counts and giving yourself little benchmarks. Um, there are also a lot of other things you can do that aren't, you know, money related, spending money related, spending time with friends or, you know, going out and doing something that you wanted to do. Uh, but having little incentives for yourself, even to hit those benchmarks, and no one else has to know about those incentives. I'm just telling you because this is my job <laughs> to tell you things. But yeah, I got this sweater and I actually ended up getting it on Black Friday during a sale. So it worked out well. And I like it. It like, guys, look how cute it is. Uh, but yeah, so I wrote a slasher novel and then I bought a Princess Diana sweater. <laughs> I will do NaNoWriMo again. I don't know if I'm gonna do the April one. I may do next November. It, again, it depends where I'm at with this. I'm gonna take time to get through this and like actually read it as a reader and not just as a writer. Cause I think that that's the best way for me to go through this and make it not bad. And the thing is too, is I don't think the whole thing is bad. I just think that there's a lot of things. It's very, flat, where it's like the things that I want to have happen, happen, um, and the things that I want them to say, for the most part, they say, but that's really it. And so there's a lot more that I want to say with it. Like for example, Simon's whole thing, Simon is one of the killers. I wanted to kind of play around with the different motivations for the killers, uh, cause that's fun for me. <laughs> As a Scorpio who was raised by two people in sales with vaguely psychotic tendencies. His whole thing is that he wants to be famous. I kind of modeled him after an e-boy on TikTok, like he really wants to be famous. And so he thinks that the way to do that is to, he kills people, kills white women specifically, cause you know, white women syndrome. His whole thing is like, well, they're the victims that are gonna get the most publicity. So me killing them is going to get the most publicity. So like there, that's a commentary on how we treat victims in this country. There's things like that that I wanna play out with more and just more. I really want to just kind of like Susanna is another character. Um, she's a web sleuth character. <laughs> she's really fun to write. I want to work on her more. Um, she's really sassy and fun and like, well, what the fuck are you going to do? <laughs> um, so I want to play around with her more. There's one of the uh, FBI agents that shows up. If you're expecting this to be at all um, nice to any of the law enforcement, it's not. <laughs> it really isn't. Uh, but one of them just decided that, no, nah, I don't know. 
his motivations become questionable. And so I need to work on that. There's like certain things that I wrote down that I know I need to add in and certain things where I literally wrote down. It's like play around with this more like, why are they doing this? Why is she doing this? What's his deal? You know, things like that. I have a lot to work on. I'm excited. I'm excited about it, frankly. And I'm choosing to focus on that versus my, is this, who is ever gonna read this if it comes? I'm choosing not to look at that voice. I'm choosing to be like, you finished a thing, good for you. You know, I'm choosing, Untitled by Amanda Golka. There we fucking go, okay? <laughs> choosing to focus on that. I'm choosing to focus on the fact that I finished something that I wrote. I'm excited to continue working. Overall, would I recommend doing RaNaWriMo? I do think so. I think if anything, whether you finish something in the month of November or the month of April, I want to say April. I'm um, watch that not even be the other NaNoWriMo month. But I do think that this is a, a really great way to kind of force yourself into give yourself something workable. Maybe you won't finish something in a month, but you know, you'll have something to work with. And I think that that's great. Community wise, I think that uh, doing this during NaNoWriMo, a lot of people that I didn't even know were writing anything were posting about doing NaNoWriMo. And that was really great to find and find other people who were like, not in the same boat, but also working on projects and things like that in this time. So that was great. The NaNoWriMo website has a lot of great trackers. Um, I don't know if they do it outside of NaNo where I can track other projects outside of NaNo. I'll, I'm gonna play around with their website a bit, but it was free to join. Um, I did donate to them at the start of the month because I could, and I do think that's great. I'm excited to have something to work on. Um, so with that being said, did you do NaNoWriMo? Do you, have you ever done NaNoWriMo? Would you like to do NaNoWriMo in the future? Is there another piece of writing that you're working on now that it's not related to NaNoWriMo, but you're working on it anyway? Let me know, comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, The Swell Shannon's Podcast, new episodes every Wednesday. I have merch, link down below. Shout out to my patrons, thank you so much for supporting my Patreon. If you also support me on Patreon, love this down below. If you'd like to follow me on my social media, that'll be all up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day, goodbye. I think where my anxiety is coming from with this just being this and the stage it's at, even though I fully knew it was gonna be at this stage, I fully knew I was gonna be finished and I was gonna have a lot of work to do. I think the reason I have anxiety about it is because I've never been at this stage at all. So it's more real than like just writing for myself and having it live in my computer, you know? Thank you, Alan, Braden, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Destiny, Devin, Dirty One, Dawn, Elliot, Evan, Beckles, Sophos, Hollow, Jekka, Ray, Joe, John, M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lex, Lisa, Luis, Matt, Matt O, Matthew S, Mimo, Lord the Red, Michael, Michael, Jane, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Prowlock, Rob, Robert, Ross, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Stefan, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Wendy, Williams, Zendry.